What happened was that he came back from the recording studios the night before, the following day, and he played it on his cassette and said, um, I, I wrote this for you. And I said, oh, really? And it was absolutely beautiful. And apparently, the night before, in the studio, he waited for the other Beatles to leave. And then he said to Glyn Johns, Glyn, can you listen to this song I've written? I don't know whether to sort of show it to the others quite yet. And so he played it for Glyn. Glyn said it was absolutely beautiful. Of course, they must play it on the album. I think everybody was in love with everybody else permanently during the 60s. You know, I would have been surprised if any of our friends had not all been in love with each other. You know, there's sex and there's love. And um, I think the 60s period, there was a genuine love for mankind, generally. I'm very liberal, actually. <laughs> very liberal person. But at that time, anyway, over the years, we were splitting up. Well, I was married to George and I went to London one day and Eric asked me to stop by the flat he was living in. And anyway, I went by and he turned on his tape recorder and he was sitting on the floor and I was sitting on the sofa and he played it and I just froze. It was the most incredibly beautiful song I'd ever heard and I knew that it was about me and he was looking at me for a response and I felt, you know, incredible pressure but it was just such a most beautiful song. I was losing someone who was my best friend and who I adored and we learnt an awful lot of very important things, issues, during our time together. We learnt them together. So this is something you, one will never forget. You can imagine how difficult it is to get through the song without actually getting the frog in the throat. I mean, it happens every time. And I think that's what real music should be about. You should have to take the risk of actually, you know, breaking down. Because it's supposed to mean that much. I mean, I'd fallen in love in the late 60s, and it kind of just simmered on and on and on. So it became something that was easy to deal with over the years. You know, we would talk about it quite a lot, and George and I would always talk openly about anything that we felt about anyone. We've always been very lucky in that respect that he's a really down-to-earth guy. And if he sees something in your eye, he wants to know what's going on. So you could never hide anything from him, and I would never try. So it was always very much talked about. The person, I suppose, who had the hardest time was Paul Patty, because... There were these two men fighting over her, but she probably loved both of them equally at certain points of the time. Yeah, George, I mean, I've got photographs of George coming over to visit us in Eric's house. How was that possible? Because I felt a bit nervous knowing George was coming, but it wasn't because he, wanted, he was going to see me or I was going to see him. It's about their music. Their music was the most important thing in their lives. And it was the glue that bound them both. I feel I'm in a much better place because I'm more in control of my life now and I still take photographs. In fact, I've got a photographic book coming out next April and it's just photographs with lots of anecdotes so it, it'll be amusing and interesting at the same time. But, you know, no, I'm loving life. I've got to go to uh, Hong Kong and then Beijing for photographic exhibitions. So there's always great things for me to look forward to.